The OWRNR in TV10 is your home for high school baseball and softball. The pitch from four, lined in the left field. That's down for a base hit. French is rounding third, and the Eagles walk it off and win the Region 2 Section 1 Championship over Musselman on the Lane to Water walk-off single. Join us all season long for coverage of every EPAC team right here on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Also, uh, try to keep your answers to one to two minutes. And uh, if you feel like uh, your name has been invoked in something, you'd like a direct response, just raise your finger and let us know, and we'll be happy to call on you at the conclusion of that person's statement. If one of your uh, opponents uh, says something that you don't agree with in the middle of their sentence, please don't blurt out, that's not true, that's a lie, or whatever, just raise your hand and we'll let you know uh, when it's time for you to be able to respond. Uh, we'll begin now with uh, opening statements, and we'll start with the incumbent delegate, Don Forst. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Uh, as most of you know, we're the, we're the district in the most southern part of the county. We're right across the county near Virginia. And uh, it's a good county, good people, conservatives, and I've enjoyed serving those people. I've been here in West Virginia for 23 years. I'm a local businessman. I've been involved in construction and property management. Before coming to West Virginia, I was involved in government contract work. I've supported various agencies through my employer the, and uh, included uh, well, Naval Material Command, Goddard Space Flight Center, National Environmental Health Services. And uh, during these years of working government contract work, my primary goals were project management support, scheduling, uh, planning. And that's sort of my background. Uh, and I try to use those skills in my current position. I think the state needs a lot more planning, <laughs> a lot more uh, looking into the future. We tend to work in the current day, current issues, and sometimes we neglect things down the road, and then we pay for that later. And so I, with that, I'll pass it on to my neighbor here. Thank you, Don. Dr. Joe DeSoto, your opening statement. I'm Dr. Joseph DeSoto. I'm a physician, scientist, religious conservative, and a veteran. I have, for the past 30 years in this community, written art conservative articles. My friends tell me I'm the most conservative candidate to run since my good old friend Jonathan Miller ran 25 years ago. And that's about when I met you, too, yeah, Admiral. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> I supported yeah. you for, city, for county council. Mm -hmm. Anyways, the... Um, I am anti-woke, pro-life, anti-tax, anti-vax, pro-gun, pro-farming, anti-development, and a pro-God. And we're going to take our country back. We're going to take our county back from this woke agenda. I am glad to be here. Um, I'm running for office. It's $20,000 a year. I'm stepping down as a physician to run from a $180,000 a year job. And so I'm doing this for my neighbors. I'm doing this for the county. Riding for 30 years hasn't been enough. We're going into the wrong direction. And it'll. And I will not change my views that I've had since I was a child. Thank you. Terry, yes. Hi. Um, but thank you for having me here this morning. This is a great opportunity for the voters of the district to get to know each one of us. Um, I'm a lifelong resident of the South Berkeley um, area fa farm family. Um, I graduated from Musselman High School in 1997 and joined the fire department um, as a volunteer. Served the community for 15 years. Um, had two children, raised them through the, the local school systems. Um, my youngest is getting ready to graduate, so I wanted to give back to the community again uh, by serving as a delegate and representing the beliefs and the uh, values of our community. And I feel that um, we need someone that is a local that has watched the changes of the community over the last 30 to 45 years. Um, the amount of growth that we've had, we haven't had the infrastructure to um, sustain that amount of growth in this quick period of time as we've had. So I'm hoping to be a good representative for the area and happy to be here. Thank you, Tammy Huss. And with our first question, John Gilstrap. 
All right, and we'll start with uh, Tammy because she was a volunteer firefighter. Good for you. Um, all right, uh, being a legislator is all about team building, compromise, negotiation, what have you. So what ideas do you have to increase the influence of the Eastern Panhandle in Charleston? Well, um, I've, from a lot of different things that I've been involved in in my life, um, I, there's a lot of politics that go into um, the volunteer fire department. You know, everybody has their beliefs on how um, education um, for the firefighters and different policies and safety regulations and things are, and it ends up being a um, kind of like babysitting. <laughs> and Appreciate you editing there, Tammy. <laughs> <by the way. laughs> it, it ends up being babysitting, and and you have to figure out how to. Um, make the most of the situation and you're not always going to be able to make everyone happy um, so you have to figure out which policies and things you need to put in place to uh, benefit the largest amount of people um, you're gonna make somebody angry uh, at some point we don't get into this to be friends um, so I, I just think that moderating and having people that um, can see things from multiple points of view um, to see how it would benefit the public as a whole um, would be the best options. And having been a station officer, babysitting is exactly the right word. <laughs> Don. Uh, well, volunteer fire departments, and I'm going to sort of roll in EMS too. I, I, They've, we've had a lot of concern with them recently. Well, just so you know, the question is what, what ideas um, do you uh, have to increase the influence at Eastern Panhandle in, um, in Charleston? Relative to fire departments. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's not an easy question because we're so different. In the rest of the state, there's a lot of volunteer units. Here we have a paid units. Uh, may maybe not totally paid, but they're different worlds and different problems. And we all are suffering from a lack of good, effective uh, organizations and staffing. We all have a little bit of a problem with money. I think in Charleston we've all been cooperative working together for these issues, but we recognize that they're different in different parts of the state. And so that's where teamwork and helping each other comes in and, and a little bit of trade-offs. Uh, we need to have a little more direct funding to, for our paid firefighters and so forth. Other people need a little more equipment and so forth. That seems to be their bigger problem. They have the volunteers, but then they need the wherewithal to do their job. So that it's not a simple answer. It's a question of working together, helping each other, and looking at this as a statewide thing, not trying to have one side have an advantage over another. Dr. Joe? Okay. Um, it's about building consensus. Empathy for the other person, understanding what their needs are, and explaining what your needs are, and building a win-win situation. I'm a product of a historically black college and university. I spent four years with the Navajo. Um, I was dean at a historically black college, and I worked in the Appalachia. And with CIA, I negotiated with ISIS and Al Qaeda. Believe me, I can negotiate with other legislators. And so, Again, but it stops by the first understanding that everyone is human and everyone is important and listening to them and then building consensus. Thank you. I'm going to go to a campaign issue. Uh, Dr. Soto, you have claimed that Delegate Force has stolen some of your signs. What is the evidence that you have for this? Um, I was at McDonald's and... I was told this by um, two DoorDash drivers, and later I was informed by two farmers and um, and also a, a, a neighbor of mine. Now, in fairness to Don, they did not see Don take the signs. They saw Mike Holtz, who was working with Don, take the signs according to them. And... Um, You know, um, I've known Don for a while. He's okay. He's not a bad person. If he did make that mistake, maybe it was under stress. Um, 
and so I, I don't, um, you know, if I look at my own life when I've screwed up, we'd be in here all day. Okay. And so I, I'd, I'd like to just focus on the future. And, um, and again, um, uh, that's kind of where I am on it. Delicate force, your response. Uh, talking to your mic, Don, if you don't <laughs> Okay. The, my response is it absolutely didn't happen. I know Mike didn't do it. Mike, I've known him for years. He's a man of integrity. Say that correctly. I don't have the time to get involved in childish things running around. I don't know when this supposedly happened or where, but it's nonsense. And uh, it's hearsay. If, if, if my opponent here stated it correctly, people telling these things who probably don't even know me. How would they know me or Mike? It's all crazy, and it's never happened. As far as I know, me or any of the people work with me have never touched one of his signs. Joe? Um, the, the individuals who witnessed uh, identified fo a photo lineup of the individuals I'm talking about from the state police. Bill, next question. Ms. Hess, do you want to wade into this? I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, I can say that I have a personal experience with my signs being taken, and I know who the individual was. Um, there was a sign of someone else um, put on my family's property without their permission. Um, my family removed that sign. Whose sign was it, Timmy? Mr. DeSoto's. And my family put my signs up. Within five days, my sign was removed, and his sign was returned to that location. Mr. DeSoto's sign? Yes. So, again, his sign was removed, and my sign was put back up. I, I hire high school kids to put up my signs. I, I only don't do it myself, and um, I don't even know where Tammy lives. Next question, Bill. Now well, actually, John. I think sign gate has been <laughs> <solved>. <laughs> it's, it's an interesting discussion, <laughs> <laughs> Rob. <laughs> Um, the word woke has come up probably more times in the last two days than, than I've heard in a while. Um, in the most recent legislative uh, session, the House took up a number of socially charged bills. We've addressed transgender labeling, school library books, requirements for school children to view certain movies that dealt with, with uh, procreation uh, and abortion. It's kind of a two-part question. Is this something that these these, these kinds of um, socially charged issues. Is this the, a good way for the legislature to be spending its time? And when, when serving in the legislature, are there issues that are important to you to make sure that it gets driven through to become law? And I guess, Joe, we'll start with you. I'm a religious conservative, and it's absolutely important. I think uh, transgender genderism is an abomination and I think it's a mental illness um, anyone who thinks it's okay to chemically castrate a two-year-old has mental problems and it's absolutely important the gender dysphoria exception turned the anti-trans into a pro-trans uh, bill and it's outrageous and it's morally disgusting um, it is important as far as abortion I see no difference in abortion and the sacrifice of the child to the idol of Molech. And so these are important. How we got here, I don't know. That said, there's other important issues like education. I went to the Muslim and high school. There's not one book of science, not one book on social science, not one book on math in their library. And so taking it from the other angle, they don't even have the right tools in there for them to learn. And the third thing on education, and this, I've been a dean at a college, is we need um, standards. In Jefferson County, they no longer test. Over here, testing's 3% of the grade. So how do we know what they've learned? Is over here Berkeley County, Joe? It's, I think it's 3 to 5%. No, is that what you meant by over here, Berkeley County? Oh, yes, yes, okay. sir. And so um, we need standards. We're graduating kids that can't even read their own diploma. We can't have it. 
Okay, Tammy Hess. Um, well, to address the first part of your question, I believe that the legislation does need to address these issues. Um, it prevents uh, things being handed down from the government level. Um, but when it comes to the materials, um, the books and the movies and the, the videos or things like that that these young children are being exposed to, I believe that there are laws on the books in West Virginia that prevent someone from sharing that kind of thing with children under the age of 18, um, and they can be prosecuted for that. So why is it in our, our libraries? Why is it being uh, presented in the classroom? That is not where these things are. Our kids are being forced to grow up much faster than what I had to grow up. And I had a very um, different uh, childhood situation where I grew up a lot faster than a lot of my friends. So I, I just don't think that that, that material needs to be available. Um, it, it definitely needs to be watched um, and, and our kids need to be protected. Uh, get forced. Um, these, the, the woke issues and so forth, uh, they're important. We need to spend. Don, could you spend, talk into your microphone? I'm sorry. Spend time on it. It's we're sent there to reflect our community and represent our people. And community values are part of what our job is. When our constituents are upset about these things or wants us to do something to help control them, that's our responsibility and job to respond. We did spend a fair amount of time on that last session. It was not easy because they're not easy things to define or not easy to enforce or to put into law. Uh, we had some success, but not as much as we'd hoped for. We'll probably tackle it again next session. Uh, but I think we all agree, I think Tammy said it very elegantly, that we don't want these things in school. And we tried to pass laws, we, just the librarian thing, it was amazing how much controversy that stirred up, how much they accused the legislatures of against librarians, wanting to put them in jail, on and on and on. Nobody bothered to read the law that we were proposing. It said if they knowingly do it, they would be liable. If it accidentally happened or they didn't realize it was pornography in the middle of some book, that was not a crime, that was not punishable. Only if they knowingly put something there that kids had access to. And that's, that was a little disappointing that people twisted that around and tried to work against what we were doing when we were there just trying to help protect the community values. Question is, I think, has been asked to every candidate for either the Senate or the delegate is, in Berkeley County, would you support home rule for Berkeley County? We'll start with Ms. Hess. I think that there needs to be a lot of checks and balances. There needs to be a lot of transparency. Um, I believe that those put into positions to uh, govern us um, should be able to protect their citizens and voters however they f feel. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, they feel that the, the voters want them to. And I agree with home rule. Um, I, I do think that there's a lot of things that, um, uh, there's a lot of legs to that, that stool. I, I don't know if I came away. Do you support or do you not support home? You I do, do support, support home. Okay. Uh, Dr. I'm going to have to disagree with um, the people that came before me and after, and this is why. Devils of the details. Home rule in California led to gun confiscation, not under my watch. Home rule in California led to property confiscation, not under my watch. Home rule led to increased taxes, not under my watch. We need laws which are consistent for everybody, especially laws that protect the First Amendment, Second Amendment and property rights. And we can't have a, a county council increasing taxes and going and going off the deep end doing those things which I said could happen because they've happened elsewhere. And I know that you've had a lot of candidates. I was back there listening 
and they need to study the, what's happened in other states when home rules occurred. That's a delicate portion. Okay. Home rules, another way of saying delegation of responsibilities and powers. I think most of us have campaigned on decentralizing some of the powers down in Charleston and giving them back to the counties. I know that they were taken away a long time ago for valid reasons, but it's time to reconsider and re redo some of these things. We've already had experience with home rule with the municipalities. It mostly it worked. Where it didn't work was a few things that were, they were supposed to do and they worked their way around it, particularly reducing property tax. So that if we do this again, and I think the couple of caveats are it's on a voluntary basis, uh, the voters have a say in it, it's not just something imposed on people. Uh, the, uh, okay, we just have to be cautious. I think not every county is ready for it. I think Berkeley County is ready for home rule. I think we have the maturity, the economic base to do it right and to do it well and to let local people decide how to fund the fire departments and EMS and how much they want to put into it. Uh, one of my biggest surprises going to Charleston was the diversity or difference between counties, population, economic situations, you name it, geography. It's not easy to do things from Charleston that helps everybody equally. We have to start letting people tailor things to their local situations, and that's partly what home rule will do. When a county's ready, they can control their own fate and deal with their own local situations. Joe, you wanted to respond. I need to respond. A couple of years ago, um, when I wrote an article in the journal that if the county taxes increased, 400 elderly would lose their homes. I was wrong, 900 did. Right now, the county is uh, considering another one, one and a half percent tax increase. How many people are going to lose their homes? How many of our elderly are on fixed incomes? And so my concern is I want to protect those who have no protection and who are the most vulnerable. And that's our elderly on fixed income and our children in our schools. You say the county is uh, contemplating increase in taxes by one and one half percent? That's what I've heard. Do you have any any evidence of this? I've not I've heard ju that. I've just read. I've just read on 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 some news and then by word of mouth. Um, I hope I am wrong. I hope that um, what they're saying is not true because there is a lot of false information. But um, at, as I sit here, I, I if you're to ask me, I, I think it is true because I also read that the school board's coming up with another um, in addition to the county tax. Um, it's actually school boards coming up with another um, levy. Oh, and my opponent, Don, in a public meeting said he would support a county tax, and that was at the Republican Club meeting. Don? So that's where I heard from it, too. Delegate Forrest, do you have a response to that? Uh, I, I think I need to be qualified more. Could you clear to say what tax I was talking about or what situation? I, I, from what I understood, and it's by word of mouth. Well, that, you were there. I thought you heard it. No, someone told me who was there. <laughs> who said that you um, supported in public another county tax. And I've heard it from three different sources from people that were there. Okay. Do you I want to wait in this, Ms. Hess? <laughs> <laughs> Smart. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, well, and if that's the case, then t I want to tell the camera that you're against any new county tax. I am against us imposing taxes on a county. I think the county people, we give them the authority to do it themselves if their population concurs with it and votes with it and agrees so with it. So I, I, just as a clarification in regards to home rule, is the position you're for home rule so long as the counties don't do something you don't agree with? Is, is that what your your feelings on home rule would be, Tammy, Joe, and, and well, Don? I'm, I'm, I'm against home rule yeah, at this point rules, yeah. because in California, you don't want it at all. Uh, uh, Tammy, I, I got you, Joe. I got you. Taxes, yeah. and Tam H, no. I, I got you. Tammy? Uh, home said rule yes. does not override state legislation. Um, it only returns more control of the money to the local municipalities. All and right. There are a lot of legs to yeah. it and a lot of different um, ways that it, it can be initiated. So depending on um, what it would be used for, I would be for it. 
if it is to impose greater taxes for salaries? No, I'm not for that. And Don? Okay. The per draft legislation said that the counties would have authority to add a, up to 1% sales tax. It didn't say how much it had to be or if they had to even do it. It's just that they have the authority to do it. That was within the proposal. And so and where these other numbers came from. Qualification, I think it also said with a public referendum. Yes, didn't okay. yes. So yeah. the people would basically do it to themselves. Nobody's doing it to them. Gotcha. Now, I'm going to move to closing statements, and these will be one to two minutes. Uh, Joe, we will start with you, and then Tammy, and then Delegate Forrest. Well, yesterday I was noted that the uh, Freedom Caucus, uh, constitutional conservatives, endorsed me. I am, I've been writing in the journal and other newspapers for 30 years. I haven't changed. I am I'm, I'm ultra conservative. My friends say I'm to the right of a toe of the hunt. Not on all, on, not on all things. But I have three doctorates. I've had a life. And now, you know, I have always been anti woke, anti tax, pro gun. I'm a benefactor life member, donated $20,000 NRA. The, I've always been the same person I am now, except now I have gray hair on my face, and I can't, I don't recognize myself when I look in the mirror. But other than that, I am the same person I have been for 30 years, and it's going to be, and I'm not going to change my view. If someone puts a gun in my, to my head, they're going to have to shoot me. I will fight for the average person. I have my entire life, and nothing's going to change it. And I follow the Constitution, but I follow God's word. God's word. And I follow the Bible, and I believe that's the word of God, and I will not deviate. Thank you. Thank you, Joe DeSoto. Tammy Hess. I'm not really sure how to follow that up. But I'm Tammy Hess. I'm running for District 91 delegate. Um, I love West Virginia. I love the community that I live in, that I grew up in, that I have raised my family in. I have dedicated my life to serving the South Berkeley community in one form or another, whether it was in the fire department, um, serving in PTAs, helping out with my children's sports teams, in classrooms. Being raised on a farm, I was given a set of values and morals that I feel that need to be represented for our, our communities. And I'm looking forward to being that person to do it. So I ask for your vote on May 14th to be the delegate um, for District 91. And now the incumbent, Delegate Don Forst. Okay. Hi, I'm Don Forst. I stand on my record. Uh, I stand on behind or ahead of, I guess, the, some of the endorsements I had. Endorsements for last session are just coming out. Uh, so far, life has supported me, NRA, medical freedom, one of the two power companies in the state, one of the law firms, and but more are coming. We're all going to get some endorsements, I'm sure. But I feel that I, rec I represent the community, uh, that we've done a lot, and I guess what we haven't stressed is the things, good things we have done. I'm totally for economic development. I feel... When the economy comes up, everything else comes up. Uh, jobs are there. I think jobs have been mentioned in earlier uh, things today. Uh, with jobs coming up, that means people are better off. Families don't fight over money anymore. They can have time to do things with kids. You can have time for entertainment. The economy is the foundation of everything in our state. We've had a we've experienced a downturn. We've been. Uh, well, not me. Some of you have been through the really nasty years. We're slowly building back, and we're starting to gain momentum. Uh, and so I'm, I'm happy to be part of that. Uh, we've, we've fixed a lot of problems. We've fixed the jail problems. They're under control. We're remodeling, we're reorganizing DHHR, which is one of the biggest spenders in the state. Uh, we've done a lot to protect children. Uh, the women's rights thing. It didn't really make it, but we're trying. That might come under the woke thing. We've done, we do a lot, and we, but it's a slow process, and I'll be the first to admit that, and it's very frustrating. We still have some major challenges ahead of us. Uh, public education. 
that's something that we all understand is is not in where it should be and it's not because of our teachers and it's not because of a lack of money it's because we have too many administrators per teacher I don't know how many administrators each teacher needs three or four <laughs> but we've known for 10 years that that's out of balance and we haven't been able to deal with it because the entrenched bureaucracy loves the way it is and don't want to change and that's just one example of a challenge in front of us uh, okay there's not time to go into all of them there's no shortage of challenges but I think I can help address these and I just want to ask you to keep me in the fight keep me there and we're going to continue making the state better telling you Don Forsch Dr. Joe DeSoto Timmy Hess thank you all for being here and best of luck to you all in the upcoming election Thanks thank for you us. WR and R the best <laughs> news station around appreciate the endorsement Joe uh, we have a final three minute timeout and then we'll be 